have here a one kilogram mass hanging from a string connected to a ring, and the ring is supported by two other strings going up at an angle. This ring is said to be in static equilibrium. Static because it's not moving, and equilibrium because the sum of the forces acting on the ring, in this case, the three tensions in the string, those forces all add up to zero. I've drawn on the board the force diagram of the forces acting on the ring. The tension from the first string, I'll call it T1. The tension from the second string, I'll call T2. And the weight of the mass hanging down, pulling on the string, on the ring, is the weight of the mass. Those are the three forces acting on the ring. The ring is not moving, so it is static. And the forces all add to zero. That's equilibrium. How do I know the forces are zero? Well, because the ring is not accelerating. And Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So if the acceleration is zero, the sum of the forces must also be zero. I've redrawn the force diagram on my uh, interactive whiteboard. Again, these are the two tensions in the string going off at an angle. And this is the tension in the string with the weight of the mass hanging down at the bottom. Right here is where the ring is located. These are the tensions, the hanging mass, and gravity, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. The ring is not accelerating. It's at static equilibrium. We know that equilibrium means the velocity doesn't change. In other words, the acceleration is zero. According to Newton's second law, the sum of the forces is mass times acceleration. And if the acceleration is zero, then the sum of the forces must also be zero. I'm going to work separately in the x and the y directions. So the sum of the forces in the x direction tell me the acceleration in the x direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction give me the acceleration in the y direction. But since the acceleration in both the x and the y is zero, the sum of the forces in the x and the y are both going to be zero. So I've added a coordinate system to my force diagram so that I can work in the x direction and the y direction. Now I've placed a grid on my uh, force diagram so that I can show you the x components of T1 and T2 and the y components of T1 and T2. The x component is how much the tension acts in the x direction. The y component is how much the tension acts in the y direction. When I look at T1, for example, there is an angle that T, that T1 makes with the x-axis. If I draw a right triangle here, this leg of the right triangle is my x component of T1. This leg of the triangle is the same as this side of this rectangle. So this leg of the triangle is my y component of T1. It's drawn here, but I could draw it over here as well. And then the hypotenuse, of course, is T1 itself. The x component is the adjacent side. The T1 is the hypotenuse. So the adjacent and the hypotenuse is the cosine function. So the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is T1x over T1. Solving that equation for T1x, then, I see that T1x is equal to T1 times the cosine of the angle. Likewise, for the y component, now I'm interested in the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The opposite and the hypotenuse is the sine function. So the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side, T1y over T1. The y component of T1 over T1. Solving that for T1y, T1y is equal to T1 times the sine of the angle. Likewise, for T2, I do the same analysis. Here's theta. 
The opposite in the hypotenuse is the sine function to give me T2y is T2 sine theta. And the x component is the adjacent side, so I use the cosine function and come up with the x component of T2 is equal to T2 times the cosine of the angle. Because of the symmetry of our uh, problem here, T2 and T1 are equal tensions. Therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and replace T1 and T2 with a single variable, T. Also, I'm going to look at the weight and I'm going to calculate its value. I know that the mass that I hung from the string is one kilogram. Using Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, the weight, which is a force, is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, of course, that's 9.8 meters per second squared. So when I multiply the mass, one kilogram, times the gra gravitational uh, value of 9.8 meters per second squared, one times 9.8 is 9.8 newtons. Newton is the unit for a kilogram meter per second squared. It is a unit of weight. Weight is a force. So here I'm looking at the sum of the forces in the x direction. Okay? So that's T1x and T2x. Those are forces in the x direction. T1x is positive. I'm using my conventional uh, x-axis notation that to the right is positive and to the left is negative. So the two forces, T1 and T2, X, T1 is positive, and T2, X is negative. I'm going to sum them. This is the Greek letter sigma, S, standing for sum. I'm going to sum them. T1, X is positive. T2, X is negative. And I know they equal to zero because it's not accelerating. So if there's zero acceleration, the sum of the forces must be zero. When I move this to the other side, I show here that the x component to the right is equal and opposite to the x component to the left. Now I'm going to look at the y components of tension. T1y points up the positive y direction. T2y also points up the positive y direction. They're both equal to T sine theta. Again, T1 sine theta, T2 sine theta. Since T1 and T2 are the same, I'm just going to call them T. So they're both equal to T sine theta. So now when I do my sum of the forces in the y direction this time, equals mass times acceleration in the y, it equals zero again because it's in equilibrium. I have three forces now in the y direction. T2y, T1y, which we'll call Ty for both of them, and W the weight of the mass pulling downward. So T1y is positive, T2y is positive, W is negative. I add them all up, and I set it equal to zero. T1y is T sine theta. T2y is T sine theta, so I make that substitution. Then T sine theta plus T sine theta is 2T sine theta. I move the W to the other side of the equation, and I solve for T. And I see that the tension in each of these strings is going to be equal to the weight of the mass divided by 2 times the sine of the angle that the string makes with the x-axis. So here's my diagram again with all the uh, axes in the grid removed. Here's the angle theta. The weight we found out before was 9.8 newtons. The angle, I measured it with my protractor. I found it to be 40 degrees. And the tension in the string then is the weight divided by 2 times the sine of the angle. So 9.8 divided by 2 times the sine of 40 degrees is equal to 7.6 newtons. So that is the tension in each of these strings.